we're gonna be ranking WoW's easiest range DPS specs, obviously from the easiest to the hardest because fun and mana are nice, but what spec could be the easiest to get into, which one is the hardest because I bet there's at least two or three that you did not know about that I am 100% right and you're going to agree with me because video. Ah! Uh. Starting with Affliction on the list because alphabetical order, Affliction isn't particularly a difficult spec, but it does have some barrier of entries when it comes to how you manage your dots, which dots do you manage, especially in AoE, although single target can be a little bit more straightforward. That said, single target rotation usually is slightly more difficult because you do juggle a lot more dots and you have to juggle all the other warlock things like being very immobile and things like that. However, the barrier of entry for warlock, I would say with affliction as well, is average. I'll put it into average because it sounds simple at the, at the front of it and it is decently simple, but it does take you a small mediocre understanding of how to actually manage your dots and your buffs and debuffs because just putting up dots is not the same. We're not in classic WoW here. Moving on to augmentation. <laughs> Dude, this spec has been on a roller coaster ride. Now, the spec itself is... I, I don't want to call it easy, but it does have... I would put it into hard. I don't think mechanically it's a particularly hard spec because it does have the Devastation style playstyle, which is very simple, very simplistic. It is very bombastic and all of that. And it has, I guess, one fewer cooldown, but the cooldowns and obviously all of the support things do interact slightly different. You have three to four support abilities that function differently depending on how and who you use them on, definitely how you talent into your build and exactly how you're using your cooldowns and all of that stuff can actually impact your performance. Not to mention maintaining Ebon Might is easy to understand, but rotating your globals efficiently can take a little bit of practice. And being the first support class, we're still just scraping the surface as to how deep the playstyle of augmentation can get. And from my humble opinion, hard is exactly where this lizard spec should be. Alternatively, Balanced Druid is yet another dot spec similar to Affliction. I think in 10.1.5 it has been severely simplified in terms of how it's doing because Stellar Flare has been taken out and it's not as annoying. In terms of understanding how it works, it's actually probably one of the simpler range specs to get into and maintaining the dots is a lot easier now. I think the devs have done a good job at making the spec still seem fun, but not actually care so much about micromanaging all the little dots which is a lot better to do right now. Balanced Druid is particularly an easy spec. It can get deeper and deeper, but those layers of complexity have been shredded over the years, over the patches, really. Arcane Mage. Ha! This spec, I would still put it into uh, one of the hardest range specs to play in the game. It might have been slightly dumbed down, and I know that a lot of people think that once you get into the spec and once you kind of understand the rotation, it gets repetitive and it's actually simple, which I do agree. The rotation, the burst windows, the little tiny windows, the uh, mana burn, the burn phase, the conserve phase and all of that stuff do pretty much become consistent whether you're playing in AOE or, or single target with one or two deviations. However, the point of this is to actually showcase how the bell curve of learning is when you get into the spec. For a new player, Arcane Mage is going to be a pain because of how you have to manage all of your cooldowns and your globals and how punishing it is, not to mention that you have to do all of this while more or less standing still. Sure, Rune of Power has been taken out and you don't have to worry too much about standing in the same spot. However, casting all of these spells still require you to sit still and that is a particularly difficult mechanic to get the hang of at the beginning when you're still learning the game with all of the swirlies and all of the movements and knockbacks and all the stuff that's happening right now in modern world of warcraft combat and <laughs> controversially where well counter ca i i don't know man on the opposite side of the spectrum beast mastery is probably one of the easiest range specs in the game now, it does have, uh, I always like to put this out, it does have a layer of complexity, by the way, in terms of how you manage your barb shot, especially if you're in AoE, how you target swap all of your bleeds, when and how often do you renew your beast cleave and your frenzy to kind of fit in one extra global, how you're factoring all of the kill command resets with your cobra shots, but even with that said, the fact that you can uh, do all of this on the move 
completely taking out that big barrier of entry for a lot of new people is insane. The level of satisfaction that you have is crazy good, not to mention this gives you a lot of freedom to first of all learn the mechanics, learn the class and so on and so forth. And with a tier set in this tier, because we can probably mention that as well, it is even easier considering how many Bishal Wraths you have where you're just constantly dishing out a lot of damage. Demonology is... Uh, where should I put Demonology? I would probably put it into Average. It could be between Average and Hard. However, uh, with, the, with the constant talent changes that they're doing, it does seem that it's they're simplifying the spec a little bit over the course of the last two patches where you don't have as many dogs and as many demonic core procs and core charges rather where a lot of people that haven't played demonology are thinking well i have to spend all of these extra instant demon bolts but i get so many uh, is, is it super important to spend all of them am i wasting some of them that kind of complexity has been shredded off with um i think you're getting only two dogs with this talent build instead of three that we had before. And it's getting a little bit... It can get a little bit more complex with the Nether Portal Pit Lord. But even that, it's it's similar to Arcane where it gets pretty much repetitive and at the same... You pretty much do the same thing all the time. But it's even less complex than Arcane. Less reliant on you standing still. And you do it a lot less frequent. About two to three times per let's say, boss phase, because you're probably going to be playing that into raids. While in AoE, it's very straightforward. It's one of the most straightforward range DPS casters where you just generate imps and you spend imps on implosion. Alternatively, destruction, I would put it into easy. I don't know if it's easiest. Maybe it could be one of the easier range specs in the game. As opposed to Beast Mastery, it is a lot less mobile. And I would say that Madness of the Azure Cure is such a big impact on destruction at the moment that managing it properly can severely impact your DPS performance. And you will notice that. Whereas Beast Mastery is not as heavily punished by, I guess, dropping the three stacks of Frenzy. So destruction is probably a little bit harder than Beast Mastery. I would put it there, although it is arguably getting very close to beast mastery level of difficulty fire mage it's back baby and it is i would put it into hard it it bears some similarities to arcane mage in the way that its rotation is very specific its combustion phase it's very specific although not as nailed down hammered in as the arcane rotation however it does impact your damage quite a bit and mechanically it's more difficult than arcane where arcane can get a little bit simpler after you know playing it for a little while fire mage doesn't get super complex but it retains a level of difficulty when it comes to how quickly you react to your procs how many procs you are able to fit in how are you using all of this in the flow of combat because fire mage plays a lot around getting as many combustion windows as possible as quickly as possible so you don't really want to waste time not using your combustion window properly so factoring this while on the fly, while in the combat, while always having to move can get a little bit difficult. Although it does seem to have a little bit more freedom than Arcane in terms of its movement because you do have Scorch which you sometimes fill in and Scorch can be casted while moving. But I do feel like Heart is exactly where Fire Mage should be. Frost Mage is a different thing. I would probably put Frost Mage into easy as well. Frost Mage is, let's say, the, the default spec that you should start Mage with if you want to take it one step at a time and learn the whole class. It's a lot more straightforward. Maybe it's a little bit more difficult than Destruction Warlock, I would say, because it does have a little bit more complex stuff, but most of the time you will be shooting out Frost Bolt until you get to the hang of the build or Ice Lances as well. You can play Glacial Spike, which is particularly easy because it does make your icicles a little bit easier to manage but frost mage does have a lot to go to get more complex than this so i think easy for the moment is exactly where frost is supposed to be alternatively marksmanship would go into average similarly to the warlock specs where with which it shares its tier list tier set tier position 
whatever you want to call it. It has some intricate mechanics in the way that you're dealing your damage. You do have to stand still a lot more with your aim shots. And there are a lot of times where you want to spend your precise shots with arcane shot, but you don't have enough focus. So you want to always rotate steady shots. Usually one steady shot, sometimes it's good. But you probably want to rotate two steady shots to maintain your haste buff if you're running the talent. So there are a lot more little buffs and damage windows and things to maintain that can get a little bit more complex and after you get it after you get the hang of it it's not a particularly difficult to, uh, spec to play but considering that you do have to stand still and cast a lot and micromanage two to three damage windows and or buffs and or procs it does require a little bit more let's say attentiveness from you so average is where it's going to be now i did mention augmentation comparing it to devastation i think devastation is I think it's an easy spec. It's not as easy as Destruction, however, it has been dumbed down from Season 1's quickly snapping all of your abilities to extend the Dragon Rage. Dragon Rage extension has been, I don't want to say dumbed down, but it has been made easier to do and to extend. You probably don't get as big of a window in Dragon Rage as before, but overall the spec is very, very straightforward. You build resource, you spend resource. It doesn't have as intricate of little DPS windows and combinations and synergies as I would say Marksmanship has, which is probably why I'm putting it into easy, not to mention that it's a lot more mobile than Marksmanship, which is why I find it a little bit difficult to put it on the same level as Marksmanship, although it, I could see an argument of it being average and not just easy. I do feel, however, that Devastation being one of the more modern DPS specs, it has been made easier for people to get into because it's supposed to be the new class to draw new people in, it's very flashy, very pretty, very colorful, and the devs have made a pretty good job at making sure that it's just the right amount of difficult and fun so that it doesn't take too long or discourage you from actually playing, as opposed to Elemental. Dear God, Elemental is... As opposed to Arcane, Elemental's rotation is fluid. It's not always the same order of buttons. It's almost never the same order of buttons in terms of how you're building and spending. However, some procs and some synergies with Surge of Power does remain very consistent in how you want to apply the buffs. However, you do have two or three buffs. And I think, personally, after playing Elemental for so many years, I think it has been made slightly more difficult now in Dragonflight with Master of the Elements affecting, I think, all of your damage, not just nature damage, because you do want to use your Master of the Elements to buff very specific specs, obviously Earth Shock and Earthquake or Elemental Blast but you run the risk of consuming it on a generator to get mails from up to get to those points before and then you might be forced to spend another lava burst to generate it and then you might over cap on mails from not to mention that there are there are at probably around double the amount of tools that you have to juggle as an elemental as opposed to arcane where Arcane suffers from being very, very punished if you mess up one thing. Elemental might not be that punished if you mess up one global or two globals, as Arcane would be. However, overall, if, if let's say, Arcane would have to juggle three very, very flamey <laughs> balls where you cannot drop one or you just kaboot. Uh, Elemental seems like it's juggling not flamey balls, but earth balls, but it's about 20 of them. So that's how Elemental feels. Shadow Priest, I would probably put it into the hard category. It does feel like it could be easier to, it's definitely easier to learn than Fire Mage. However, it's been going through so many iterations that trying to get a consistent feel of how the spec plays kind of changes almost every other patch, as opposed to Fire Mage, with play, which plays very similarly to Shadowlands, which plays very similarly to BFA to an extent where Shadow Priest kind of constantly always changes, the identity of the spec always changes, so it's always it always feels kind of like a semi-new spec to play. Although it is easier this time around than, than Season 1, I would think, considering that they've essentially redone the talent again to make it more seamless and smooth. However, it is also probably because you're not playing the, the Yashiraj, the... Uh, Prism, the Mind Blast extends your Mindbender playstyle, which is probably one of the harder playstyles to play with Shadow Priest, and you're only not playing those because they're just not that viable, but if they do become viable again, that's where the difficulty of Shadow Priest comes into, because there's so many things to juggle, and it borders very close to elemental levels. Not quite elemental levels, but it would see it being pushed down into the hardest 
tier sets. Although right now I could see an argument for average as well, but I'm not talking about the main Shadow Priest that already know how to play this spec inside and out. Because knowing how to play this spec inside and out does go a long way into actually getting a better feel and dishing out better numbers. And range aside, you can also do the same thing with melee. And we already ranked the easiest to hardest melee DPS specs. And you can check right here, following the same train of thought and figuring out what should you play if you're just looking for an easier time.